everybody. And we... Hi there. Hey, hi, Jim. And we... Uh... Hi, Bob. Hey, so this match promises to have the stands rocking. Rocking no more, Bob. The hooligans have already strung up the band. Oh, yes. When you look at the difference between the sides, you have to wonder how many players will finish this match. They should all finish it, but in what state? That's the point. Three, two, one. Bust up! They can start to move forward. Mm, what violence! Yes! It's a great spectacle, Bob. These exotic blood bowl players are fairly new to the game, Jim. Yes, Bob. They mesmerize me every time they enter the pitch. Ah, yeah, Jim. These Lustrian Amazons sure have added some flavor to the game. Look at that. Whoa! Oh, wow! Ow! Boom! In the face! And then followed by a clean uppercut. Well done! Poetry in motion. What we'd like to see... More, more often. often. Today's insight comes from Jaime Schnipp, coach and owner of the Goblin Lowdown Rats team. In yesterday's Spike magazine, he said that Blood Bowl was like war. No winners, just survivors. Oh, that's deep. About as deep as his team's position in the rankings. She sent him down for a chat with the Astro Granite. I doubt he'll be taking any further part in the match after that. No, no, we still got two legs. That's the sort of technical error that can cost you the game.
I've heard of teams that have simply disappeared after being abandoned by their supporters. Let's say that some teams who haven't won a match for several years have been tied up by their fans and thrown into rubbish containers. It's the only way to end a downward spiral. The player has got the ball, and now he's the main target. I'm sure the fans will get a chance to cry out that during this match, Jim. Sure hope so, Bob. Timber! Did you hear about the Venus Man-Eaters, Bob? Oh, yes, Jim. I think everyone knows about the Man-Eaters. Oh, I'm scared, Bob. So is everyone with proverbial coconuts. Ouch! Have a nice sleep. Little baby gets his medicine and he's having a little nap. Right in the face! The other guy couldn't dodge that one!
don't hit me, don't hit me. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, that's an old reflex on hearing the starting whistle. The Blood Bowl annals are littered with the stories of teams who've gone bust with crippling debts. And with the cost of doping and bribery on the rise, the problem won't be going away. Wizards have not always been able to cast spells safely from behind the sidelines. Were you playing at the time in an Albion League, a second division that prohibited spell casting from off the pitch? Oh yes, they were great times. I remember fans traveling to games just to see how well Wizards stood up to the mad charge of a raving Blood Bowl star. The noise created by a sizzling fireball, followed by the characteristic sound of the snap of a wizard's neck. Children, don't try and do this at home. Remember, these are seasoned professionals. Well, one of them is anyway. That 
right hook was worthy of a back hook. You're telling me it'll take a while to get over it. Doping is really endemic in this sport. Isn't it written into the game rules? That reminds me of when I took Griff to bits in the 91 final against Reitland. Oh, yeah. You kneecapped him. They can start to move forward. Well, the rumor must be true. These guys don't even have enough money to buy a ball for training. Some cute little elf beauties are selling Big Moot sandwiches in the stands. Hey, I'm off to get one. I'll be back in five minutes. And so now you like Big Moot sandwiches? Yeah, no way! A little elf beauty? Yeah. Like there was some bad blood between those two, eh, Bob? Yeah, Jim. Something to do with swapped body parts. The 
second half is about to start. Yeah, now's the time to sneak off to the bar to grab a couple of pints of troll juice. Ah, too late, Jim. The supporters have drank it dry. We should keep an eye out for action in the stands then. Was really strong. Do you think they have some troll blood in them? Mm, could be. Or maybe his opponent shouldn't speak that way about the family. Corruption so widespread that the referee's guild has set up rules concerning where, when, and how one can accept a bribe. Under an agreement signed last season, the clubs are not allowed to offer less than the going rate. Did you hear about the Evil Gits, the team that is made up of the mix of evil players? Their fans won the most evil supporters of the year award. Fully merited from what I've seen. I think she's singing him a lullaby. appreciate the gaping wound either.
and sidekick to the face. Let's see that again in slow motion. one that won't be coming back in a hurry. Just look at the fans. They're red hot. A majority of supporters reckon that the league should take measures to prevent the small minority of peaceful fans from watching a match from the terraces. They've got a point. If they don't want to join in the fun, they might as well stay home and watch it on cable vision. Well, that's the end of the match for him. With an injury like that, I think we're talking Korea, don't you, Bob? That's what happens when a pro crosses an amateur. Yes, splotch. Touchdown, ahoy! As long as they don't slip up on the gold boom. in play. The ball went straight into his hands. Referee's Guild has decided to hire a bodyguard for each game. Another brilliant idea. And just how effective will one bodyguard be against a stadium full of supporters? True. Could be a bit one-sided. Mm, what violence! Yes! It's a great spectacle, Bob. It's pathetic to see a so-called professional doing a thing like that. Amateur! Left punch, right on the nose. Sure was, Jim. It's broken now. <laughs> it's pathetic to see a so-called professional doing a thing like that. Amateur! Yep, upside down. That's one way to look at things. Everywhere. I was told that you can find round balls. Much less fun. That's the sort of technical error that can cost you the game. Jim, that the Trax Warriors were the first people to win the Zlatan Cup back in 2491? You mean no one else had won the cup before, Bob? Uh, no, Jim. It was the first time a non-lizard team participated in the Lustrian Cup, and the Amazons took it by storm and grabbed the trophy from Sotek's word. Oh, no, another one who actually plays the ball. <laughs> There's no way he's gonna score a touchdown. Laid out on the pitch like that.
would you say is the most famous halfling team out there, Bob? Who can dispute the Greenfield Grasshuggers' mark on Blood Bowl, Jim? Ah, yes, Bob, but they don't exactly win their games. No, Jim, they don't. But when they finally gave up against the Asgard Ravens after the 734th corpse was carried from the pitch, new legislation limiting teams to only 16 players was rushed through the very next week. True, true. They made an impact on the pitch and an impact on the rules that day. made a move. Go, go, go! Oh, calm down, Bob. You're going to embarrass the other team. Go, go, go! that most of the Amazon team's devoted fans consist of young men, Bob? Not at all, Jim. I've heard a large portion of their fan base consists of disgruntled homemakers and countless scores of former Bloodweiser names. Aha! That would explain why the Amazon fans have their own fans themselves. That's what fans pay out good money to see. Yeah, and that high mark is fully justified. Some teams put too much emphasis on their physical presence, but Blood Bowl is more than a fight. There's a ball out there, dummies. The stats don't lie. Defeat is the only logical outcome. Yeah, and it doesn't need deep analysis to see where the problem lies. Possession is the key. I hope that none of the opposition suffered from claustrophobia. The team kept them confined to their own half. Own quarter, I'd say. Everybody clean. It can't be. They must have come up with an undetectable doping substance. I hope so. Otherwise, we're in for a dull match. Was the ref watching the same match as us? I mean, I saw several incidents that merited a sending off. Perhaps he was enjoying the spectacle. 